Greetings, my friends. It is I, Kolar the Unkilled. Let us now have a look at the latest mods as of January 26th, 2020. Shall we begin? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, JK's... JK's and Arthmore's patch. That's nice. I don't use any uh, exterior JK mods, so I don't have much experience there. I do, I do use some of the interior JKs. They are outstanding, but I, I, I wouldn't have much to, sh uh, to say on that, although they do tend to look nice from what I've seen. <laughs> 3D Rift and Leaves. Um, oh, okay, so this, this provides a little bit of texture and detail to the Leaves on the docks and the ground and such at Riften. Okay. HPP standalone. Well, not much to say about that. I suspect that's something that I personally could do without. Maybe there are some leave aficionados out there. Far better interiors. What do we have here? Removing the... F remove the interior fog... Oh, it disables the distant fog. I understand that that might work well with certain lighting overhauls, although I like fog. Oh, this is incompatible with RLO, ELE, and more complex, larger-sized mods like ELFX. Try it alone or below vanilla. Okay. Not much I can say about that. Now, this is very... Uh, this, my friends, is an example of a captivating thumbnail. Um, here we have, apparently, a custom follower, and she's got huge tracts of land. Well, let's just have a look here. And um, why is Jeff Gold... You did it, you crazy son of a bitch. You did it. Okay, I don't really understand the uh, Jeff Goldblum reference there, Morgan, but um, she's so effing happy that she's gotten her fully working, uh, deleted the old test and uploaded. Um, not much to say. Um, really, there's not much to say. There's not much to go on here. She's at the Bannered Mare um, by day and the Temple of Kenrith by night. That's, yeah, okay, that's interesting. Well, there you go, my friends. A custom custom follower by Morgan Helsing for just under 11 megabytes. She looks very cool from the uh, thumbnail, like I already said. Oh, now, better shaped bows is something I've had favorited for a long time. How many of you use this? This looks outstanding to me because mainly the ebony bow, which I've never liked. And a lot of these, like the Falmer, yeah, it just makes them more narrow. Kind of like a Lean Wolf's for bows. All for under 10 megabytes. So this is something I've played around with using for a long time. I've never used it. Most of the vanilla bows, I just don't have enough of a problem with to need replace them, if that makes sense. Other than that, I would really like to work this into my load order at some point. It looks very good. Oh, hey, this is Keshrasa by Crimson Dragon. Thum out to Crimson Dragon. I actually reviewed Keshrasa along with a couple of his other followers. Oh, that, that was a long time ago now. You can find that video somewhere on my channel if you, uh, if you look for it. But, um, I don't know. What, what has been updated about Keshrasa? He's been around for a while. Anyway, uh, you know, very lightweight. Good to have if you want uh, an additional Khajiit follower. I'll definitely stand by that one. Another uh, follower from Crimson Dragon. I never actually reviewed Lannister Blade. He came out after that other review that I did. But it's sort of the same idea here. Just a different type of... Just a different type of, of follower that you can have. Um, 
I wonder if, yeah, here we go. Marin Blackthorn, that's one of the ones that I included in my review there. Marin is a, a mage of some accomplishments and ability. So the Hearthfire, Hearthfire Carriage Destinations. I've used this before. I like having this uh, in the game. You should be able to, you know, if there's a carriage, you should be able to travel virtually anywhere that carriages would be able to go from your Hearthfire home. Although, I've always role-played it in such that my Hearthfire drivers, you know, those are my personal drivers. So they'll go a little bit more out of the way to carry me around, but as long as you pay the price, why not? Nice little mod. So here, what do we have? Royal Family Cats, three Khajiit followers, uh, ported by Crimson Dragon. Well, that's, ooh. Those are some nice looking Khajiit followers. I like having Khajiit followers. Especially when I'm playing a Khajiit character. I usually end up with my own sort of caravan traveling around with me. I use AFT. The problem, when you AFT the Khajiit caravans, many of them are programmed to repeat merchant dialogue again and again and again. So you're constantly hearing things like, Come, come, see my wares! As they're traveling along with you. Which just... It gets very old very quickly. Log change, Brown Mountains. Because the vanilla distances are gray, if you're using a Brown Mountain... Okay, well... Very lightweight mod. No illustration to uh, really go on here, but not much I can say on that. Oh, oh, okay. A texture pack that covers Dragonborn DLC. That's good because there aren't very many. So it also covers Apocrypha, which is very nice. It doesn't cover Raven Rock. Wood. Raven Rock Wood. And it doesn't cover Ashlands because he likes to use it with Dark Ages Solstein. Okay, so this is really sort of a pick and... Sh it's a, a hodgepodge of uh, textures that are a personal preference for, um, for Skyrim Leona here, I guess. Um, a decent file size. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to have more to go on than just this pick. How about some uh, Apocrypha picks? Let's see what that looks like. Clever Charf. I'm, I'm sure Clever Charf uh, looks very good with the Apocrypha retextures. More mesh fixes. I think we looked at those. We talked about those in one of the prior videos. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, because if you're not already using something that fixes these textures, this could be helpful. My mod bundle. So this is Skyrim Leona's personal mod pack of various author creations to save plug-in slots. Now that is that is very interesting because it's all to this individual's personal taste. But uh, you get oh you get thugs not assassins improved college entry which I have used. Improved Companions, which I could have used recently with my Companions playthrough. Ah, uh, let's see. A Lovely Letter Alternate Roots. I'm not familiar with that. Parthenax Resolution. Safe to say what that does. Ignore the Forsworn, yeah. Marriage. Phalion is Rude. Rogvir's Amulet of Talos, Enhanced Dragons, Less Tedious Thieves Guild, Dragonborn, and Dawnguard Delayed. So, there are quite a few quality of life changes included in this bundle for just over a megabyte. I can't really object to anything 
here. Of the ones of those that I've experienced, I like them all and ended up getting rid of them. Why? Because not enough mod slots. So this type of mod helps to, uh, helps to solve that issue. So thumb out to Skyrim Leona for that bundle. I like it. What have we here? Ooh. Ooh. I love the illustrations. Okay. Seven swords, two daggers, seven maces, two great swords, and two war hammers. So are they retextures or. If you want to know the recipes, okay, so I assume these are added. Are these added into the game? Does it state that here and I'm just missing it? I try not to spend too much time reading descriptions on these types of videos because I don't want to take up your time, but I like what I see here. So if these are just simply added into your game, it's less than five megabytes, my friends. Why not? Why not? If you have the space, I can't complain about that. That looks that looks fairly exquisite. Moving on. The last, the lost Akaviri part three, the finale. So we've got some sort of a quest here. No, the so it's a sword, the Zakri do Dovakin. Transfers the shout you have currently equipped to your sword on contact. Wow, so you could you could hit somebody with your sword and fusro da them off the cliff at the same time. Or you could hit somebody with your sword and clear the skies. How awesome would that be? Um, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I believe actually my uh, I believe my Vokri overhaul that I'm currently using has something like this, only it pertains to spells, so it's not quite the same. Oh, darn! It only works for offensive shouts, such as unrelenting force, fire and frost breath, drain vitality. It doesn't work with clear skies. Bummer. So here we have another Khajiit follower who is not good at English. Okay, the the mod author is not good at English. Well, I tell you what, um, you're good at taking screenshots. Those are beautiful screenshots. See, stuff like that alone can sell me on a mod. And for um, 290 kilobytes, why not? There's another Khajiit follower that you can add into your game. Very lightweight. She's a magic user, apparently. With AFT, she can be anything you want, uh, within reason. Okay, so here we have the, the Scrivener's Croft. Ooh, oh. Oh, boy, that looks glorious. Look at the file size, though. So just outside of Dragon Bridge is a great location. And it features no smithing. Everything that you would need except for smithing. Fine. Look at that place. I love the look of this. Now, I rarely allow that much file size for player homes in my load order. I just have too much else going on. But that looks exquisite. Right there you can see it's located just adjacent to the Dragon Bridge as you would move into town. That looks glorious. Especially that shot right there. You know what I like? I like bookshelves that you can put books into and then you see the books. I don't like the bookshelves that are just behind closed doors. Not at all. Ooh, excuse me. Okay, here we have something similar to the road, the um, the mod before for Dragonborn DLC, 
uh, retextures only certain things, but not others. Okay, similar to what was before. So here we have mortal enemies in movement. Now, wait a minute. Now, Mortal Enemies has been around for a long time. That is a mod that I have in my load order. And so, yeah, it basically makes it so that the, uh, you know, a bandit chief, for instance, can't power attack you even though you've moved past them. They can't just magically pivot and still hit you with a big weapon. It also affects the player's range of movement when attacking and power attacking. And so I have kept that in my load order because I like that. It gives you an added ability to dodge certain things. What's the difference with this one? Because it seems to be pretty much the same mod. Oh, don't tell me Mortal Enemies was taken down. I haven't gone down my own load order list in a while, so maybe it was. By the gods. Here's the same thing with no race edits. Oh boy, Imperial Agent 1992 strikes again. He's got a lightsaber, my friends. Zero vanilla assets. And for the thumbnail, we have a lightsaber. What more can I say? Not in my load order, damn you. There is no place in my Skyrim for lightsabers, but that's just me. Okay, so here we have some Renthal textures for hay and thickets and dead shrubs. Okay. Looks, looks fine. Looks good from here. I already have those things replaced in my own load order. I don't know about dead shrubs. But uh, there you go, about 20, less than 24 megabytes. Uh, let's see, uh, farmhouse wooden fence replacer, also by Renthal. Wow, look at that. Less than 5 megabytes, and that looks very good. But, I don't know, it looks a bit rickety. The quality of the texture is excellent. But I have no problem with um, the way my fences currently look. And they are Skyland all in one. So I'll pass on that one personally, but it does look good. We have another new Khajiit follower. Does he actually come in Daedric armor? Let's see. Probably not. He's essential, of course. Currently suffers from a gray phase on and off. Maybe not, though, because that was fixed in version 6. I don't know. If I have a Khajiit follower, I certainly wouldn't put a helmet on him. But anyway, another Khajiit that we have to choose from now. Barrels by Renthal. Fine. It's good to have variety, you know. That actually doesn't look great. I mean... Yeah, I'm sorry to say that I that that's a bad picture. Um, but even that one, it's a little bit more well lit. It just doesn't look great to me. My current barriers are other are they're covered under the smim that I use, divine smim. Yes, I know, I know, divine. I know, I know. But I stand behind divine smim. I have listed my reasons numerous times. Giant Warhammers. No, thank you. I know there's a lot of requests for that, though. So that's... Hey, there you go. Giant Warhammers now. Equipable Nordic Tattoos. Also by Pyrock. Now that could be interesting. And I guess the one screenshot that we get kind of sums it up. That That's something I'd have to play around with for a while. Yeah. Looks, looks interesting. 
Okay, what do we have here? Real skeevers? Ooh. Oh, yeah, you know, the original skeevers look horrible. I mean, not in just the sense that they're ugly, but the textures. They, they are ugly in more ways than one. So, But, you know, I don't know if I can make room. It's 13 megabytes to make skeevers look better. And all I really ever see of skeevers aside from that one loading screen, is when they, they run and they jump and they're dead because I kill them. So, I just, unless you're, you know, if you've got a pet skeever, maybe, maybe this would be worth it. Maybe. 3D Farmhouse Door by Renthal. Ported by Chrysomir. That is a good looking door. I'll give it that. Here's the same thing without the frame. Very well. My goodness, it never ceases to amaze me the the depth the depths that are plumbed through modding on Skyrim. You can mod any the, You've got the door and the door without the frame. I mean, that's just that's just glorious to me. Even though I'm not going to use that mod, I still find it amazing. Okay, The Adventures of Jake Morningstar. What have we here? Jake was a Nord living in Skyrim many, many years prior to the founding of Whiterun. Witnessed the days of Yor the beginning days of Yorvaskar and was friends with the inhabitants. Uh, so he's very old, obviously. Let's see. Dun, dun. His family. Let's see. You can read the description. I'm just trying to skim through here to see what we've got because it's 14 megabytes. Okay, so Jake has placed containers all throughout Skyrim as caches for his future travels to supply him. And so you find these things. There's an example right there. fascinating. We don't get a look at any of the particular items though, so I would really be interested to hear what you all have found. Anyone who has used this mod, is it worth it for 14 megabytes? Are there just some glorious, unique uh, assets for weapons or armor, things you can find? I don't know. For that size, it's hard to tell. Could be an interesting addition to your game though, for sure. Real creatures. Oh, it includes the Skeevers and the Spriggans. Nice. Oh, that looks good. The Elk. The Elk looks very good there. Yes, make the creatures of the game look better for 40 megabytes. I have no problem with that. And then here we have, individually, the Spriggans. Which, actually, I think Spriggans look pretty good already. And the Elks could use some work. And it looks good for almost 14 and a half megabytes. It should look good. But yeah, that is a definite improvement. Hmm. That would improve the looks of uh, Rudolph. The Rudolph mod that I use. For however much longer I have that. Do not download. Okay, let's move on. Der Schwarz. Uh, let's see. The Treasure of Riverwood Manor. Quite a large file size. Features a player home. A treasure hunt. Unique NPCs and followers. Powerful equipment. Easter eggs. Now this looks... Uh, that is fascinating. Not much to go on. I think maybe I, I saw this one before a few weeks back. I may have talked briefly about this. I like things that... I mean, just any quality addition that can be added in. Anything that makes Skyrim itself richer. Which is why I use TPOS 2. So anything that I can add in addition to TPOS 2, which is something like this, perhaps. I don't know if it's compatible with uh, Riverwood Grove that I currently use. Maybe. We'll see. Probably, like I said, though, for... 
I rarely allow, uh, I don't allot space for player homes of that size, but this includes a lot more than just a player home. So um, perhaps for the future, that one would be interesting. Woodsview Cottage. Now this is the size player home I can allot space for. It's very small. It's, it's positioned very near where, well... So it's out. It's so it's a bit uh, west of where Oakwood and Aurora would be. It appears along Lake Illinalta. We don't have anything else to go on. It just looks like a generic cottage for your use. So that's fine. No problem with that at all. College of Winterhold player room overhaul. Oh, so is that the um, so that means the room that you are given when you first join the college, your little uh, in the Hall of Ascension there, your little room that you get. Now that's actually quite nice for the file size. I'm not sure why there would be an Arvax skull there, but uh, it looks it looks good. Looks good from what I see. Okay, so another version of Sophia. Another, okay, faction outfits that's been around for a while. Here we go. Capital Windtown expansion. Stone Spiral Gaming, 130.49 megabytes. What have we here? New buildings, new shops. A more open city layout. I love the idea of this. Would it be compatible with TPOS 2? I wonder. I love the idea. White Run by Nesbitt. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of thought that goes into all the details of anything by Nesbitt. You have to check for compatibility. It's a large file size, 140 megabytes, uh, but it just overhauls Whiterun and the surrounding area from the city itself. Oh, okay, so you, actually, you have to have the people of Skyrim TPOS 2, you have to have that in order for this to work. So that is meant to work with this. I wonder if, let's see. I wonder if it's compatible with Autumn of White Run. I shall have to ask Nesbitt because I love Autumn of White Run for what it does to White Run overall, the look of the city. Very difficult for me to even consider getting rid of that. Glamoril, Magic of Time and Space. Now, this has been around for a long time as well, and I've never used it, but it looks glorious. If you can afford the file size, um, you, get, you get a lot of new spells, a new home, an Elder Scroll to wear. Oh, that's nice. You get new armor, a new sword, a new staff. Perk trees. Okay, so this is something else. You'd really have to check for compatibility. Uh, it appears to add new, uh, perhaps a new area or new areas as well. This looks quite spectacular. Not enough time to really go over everything that this mod would do. This is just something, hey, download it, test it out, make the space, make the time. A lot of favorites, a lot of high ratings. So this, this looks quite glorious. Okay. Shrana Dialogue, self-explanatory. Uh, that's the patch for RDO. Let's see. Character Behaviors Enhanced. Um, we're about ready to strike a slaughterfish. Wait, underwater combat? You can enter the water with your weapons or your magic drawn. You can bash and block. 
Okay. You can't use a torch underwater. That's good. Or bows. Mid-air attacks. Mounted casting. Brilliant. dual wield blocking. Yeah. Hey, come on. In real life, try and tell me that you, just because you're not... You, you're using two swords, but you can't block? Forget about it. So this adds a lot of good things. Block while staggering. Attack faint to block. Wow. Dodging. I, I, I just... Okay, so this adds, this implements many features which probably should have been included in the original base game. So my question is, how well does this really work? And I can't speak to that because I've not tested this. If, uh, if there are those of you who have, feel free to put that in the comments as a reference to the rest of us who want to know how well this actually works because it sounds quite splendid. And here's another Glamorol mod. How is this one different than the other one? Um, see, it's a... So you begin a quest, the Maze of Labyrinthian. Watch the walkthrough if you have any doubt. I'm going to leave that to you, my friends. Watch the walkthrough. It will be much better explained there than I can do so here, since I have not experienced the mod myself. I try not to speak on things too much that I have not actually tried. So here is the town of Pine Watch. Oh, oh, Pine Watch, yeah. So this is this should be right next to uh, Lakeview Manor, and it puts uh, just a small town where the Pine Watch uh, secret band out, bandit, where the secret bandit hideout is. It puts a town there. Not a, not a bad idea. Some kind of teleport spell. Valhalla Rift. Ooh, ooh that looks glorious. Glorious screenshot there. I appreciate that, Skyfall. So what is this? Uh, overhauls the rift, the forest, and the aspens. The rift now feels like a charming forest with tree diversity, early autumn feel with colors of green, yellow, orange, and red. Fantastic. Five out of the six aspen models have been replaced. More tree diversity. New landscape. Okay. So there's a Laud patch as well. Now, obviously, there, there has been some uh, tweaking of display enhancements or something for these screenshots. Uh, that, I assume, is not inherent in the mod because the mod adjusts the trees and the landscapes. 38 megabytes. It looks like it would be very good. Very good. I wonder if it's compatible with TP TPOS 2. Because it changes landscapes, uh, that's what makes me wonder. Very good, though. ASMR race? A ASMR race? Not much to go on there, that autistic dude. 230 megabytes? Good God, man. Here are the... Okay, Valhalla Rift and SFO log patch. Imperial Post. Oh, it's a news agency. Since quickly written additions to many of the inns and taverns, but beware, due to the Civil War, the deposit locations may be tainted with Stormcloak propaganda. Excellent. I can get behind that for sure. 
farmhouse improvements. Floor and, um, okay, floor textures, window textures. I like my Skyland farmhouses. That looks like vivid from here uh, in the screenshot. Looks good. A little, a little too worn for my taste. Okay, here we have some followers. Custom asset followers, which is why they're 12.73 megabytes. Well, for this particular one here, Evelyn, she's beautiful. Good job. Here is Evelyn with red hair. Um, even better, if you ask me. Uh, let's see here. Guard armor replacer 1K by 2 second. Wow. 300 megabytes. Those look quite fantastic. Here's the 2K version for almost 400 megabytes. I bet that looks amazing. I wonder what the impact on performance is. Zinabi's Pet Shop. Oh, yes. I just saw this. Look at that. It's a little troll. A very little troll. I just saw this on um, RTD Vids. Demonstrated this mod, and I, I commented that it looks amazing for the file size. It's just 121 kilobytes, which is nothing. And you get all these miniature... You get little miniature netch jellies. Miniature trolls, apparently. Foxes. It looks it looks like it'd be fun. Well, that's that'd be fun. Don't know if it's gonna have uh, if there'll be room in my loader for that, but I like that we have that. I like that it's there. Oh, here we have some music replacement. Always nice. Oh, there's a replacer and a non-replacer. I always go with a non-replacer because I love my Skyrim soundtrack. I would never want to get rid of it entirely, but just add to it, you know, because over the years. We've heard it so much. It doesn't really get old, though. Not for me. Arteum's trading post. Here we have um, purple blade, purple blades armor. So you get some different things out of this shop for about a megabyte. You can find some unique things in there. I'm not sure. There's a bed. Yes, unusual items and objects that can be used, bought, and later displayed. Okay. Males of Skyrim and Ethereal Elves Overhaul Patch. Okay, I don't really know anything about Ethereal Elves Overhaul. I've not used that, so I can't really speak too much on this. Jedi Sith Light Armor. We, okay, we've got some a new armor variants. That's not overly large for an armor pack, and they all look good. If you like that clothing style of armor, which I don't usually use, honestly, but I, I'm not denying it, it does look good. I think it, it definitely worth, it looks worth the price. Stormcloak Rebellion, yeah, that's this has been around for a while. Uh, just a little bit more variety to Stormcloak armors. Yeah. What is this? Oh, come on. So Imperial Agent has his own... Okay, so Imperial Agent's armor. This is... This is IA 1992's own armor that we get a... an illustration of... Okay, hot springs. That's a good idea. Adds 11 hot springs. Wow, 126 kilobytes. This this costs you practically nothing. So you just camp out in the hot springs here? Uh, let's see. So does it uh, declothe your followers automatically? Oh, heat sources that are recognized by Frostfall. Okay, so you can use it uh, in conjunction with survival-type mods. 
that would be nice. I don't use survival mods, but if you do, if I did, I'd probably want this in my game for sure. Better Windhelm ground meshes. Probably couldn't hurt when it's only a megabyte, but I see a lot of snow here, which I don't believe is included in the mod. So here we can see the different ground mesh. Here we see more snow. More ground. Okay, it... it hey, it... For what we can see here that's not snow, it looks good for this size. Just over a megabyte. Oh my goodness, so many new mods. I should start doing these types of videos on a nearly daily basis because I can't even get through all of the new additions every few or so days. There's just so many that either come out or have been updated. Werewolf Overhaul. Man Beast. Very small file size. If I were into werewolves, I would check that out for sure. There's a Brazilian Summer Mist uh, patch there. Wushu weapons. Oh, well, now that is very different. Wushu. Okay, so we have some Chinese martial art inspired weapons here for 142 uh, plus megabytes. Bandits, so they're added to the leveled list. Bandits carry them. Very, very interesting. Here's a weapon pack by Nico Roshi. Why does this happen? Um, I see this a lot with screenshots on here. It's probably through no fault of whoever uploads a screenshot, but it's just half of a picture or even less. Why? Why does that happen all the time? So, basically, we have a, a large variety of curved swords here. They all look good. Wow. Good good quality on those. G good way to add some more curved swords to your game. Gods be praised. Okay, males of, males of Skyrim. This makes dudes look like they're waxed, I guess. All right, well, not something I'm going to be into. The skin textures look good. It's good quality, so I'll give it that. Oh, that's the 4K. Wow. Okay, so there's a 2K version. I just, I want to see more faces. Like, I mean, the faces look, they look good. They look a bit smooth. I don't know. The quality is definitely there, if that's what you're into. Oh, here's the body and the hand mesh only. Oh, it's just a, a, about a septum's worth. One megabyte. All right, more Brazilian translations. Yeah, more translations. Oh, okay. Anti-immersive sound compilation replacer. So it just replaces all your Skyrim sounds with a bunch of goofy shit. Like Gordon Ramsay saying, It's raw! Or some such things. I don't know. I just saw his face on the thumbnail, so I assumed that's what it was. And it, yeah, it says it right there. Lowered hoods. Lo oh, oh, I see. Lowered hoods. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about that. I get annoyed if my hood sticks to the back of my head, so I don't know. That could look good in some cases and maybe not so good in other cases. Very interesting idea, though, from Skyfall. A lot of favorites on that already. Okay, so here we have another hair patch. Or pack. A hair pack. 
and it tells us what the uh, names of the hairs are, but do we have these memorized? I don't. I want to see... I want to see what I'm getting for my 40, almost 48 megabytes. Damn. What does it consist of? Show me. I don't understand why. Okay. Never mind. Moving on. The Warrior of River Quest. River Crest. God, I did that the last time as well. I said the same thing. Okay. So this is, um, yeah. So this is a, uh, a, a sort of quest, I believe, with uh, that contains a, a player home. Okay. I don't know if it contains a player home. I thought it did, but I'm not seeing any evidence of that here. So it's mainly a quest. Uh, there must be uh, some custom assets in there for the size of the mod. Which is, that's good. That's what I want from a quest mod, for sure. Just not a, not a whole lot to go on there without actually trying it out. So I shouldn't speak any more on that. Shorter stone clutter enhanced. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Bedhead. Okay, so it's a retexture of vanilla hair that aims to preserve the general art direction while offering more detail and a wide variety of color options. I wouldn't have understood that from the title here. Bedhead kind of insinuates that your hair is going to be all fucked up in some way. That does not appear to be the case at all. This appears to be uh, improving the hair, sort of like... Um, Realistic, lore-friendly, lore realistic hair, or whatever it is. Similar style mod, I suppose. Markarth revised. Very small. Very small mod we have here. My goodness, I've been going on for almost an hour. Let's, let's get through some of these. Enhanced dragons. Okay. Uh, let's see. It fine-tunes dragon AI and increases their stamina, health, magicka, and physical damage. Rewards are doubled. So it makes dragons tougher, and you get more once you kill them. Yeah. I could go along with that. Parapets and Epic Crab Bundle. Oh, okay. So it's another bundle-type mod that uh, Skyrim Leona... Um, we talked about... Something very similar to this at the beginning of the video. Um, okay. There's the pottery. Okay, I did that last time. So I thought, my friends, I thought that there was something else out that I saw. My goodness, there are a lot of things. There are so many new mods out that I don't even get to go through them all, like I said earlier. This is relatively new. That looks quite spectacular if you'd like to play a female barbarian type character. At least from my the screenshots, the textures look decent there. Okay. But there was Okay, there was another mod I really was looking forward to going over and I'm not seeing it. Is it surely it's an environmental there it is. Thank you. SFO Definitive Edition by Skyfall. 96 megabytes. Now this is something I have really been looking forward to. And it, it, it yeah, it offers a big improvement from the original SFO 2.0, which is what I'm currently using in conjunction with a couple of other tree mods because of the deficiencies in SFO 2.0. So from what I saw watching um, the RTD vids showcase of this, the bark, the bark is supposed to be much improved. That doesn't look great. 
Okay, so I'm just going to have to install this and test it out myself because to me, trees, tree mods are among the single most important types of visual enhancement mods that we can use in Skyrim. I take tree modding very seriously, which is why I'm typically using more than one at a time, combining various tree mods in the attempt to get the best of each in a way that works within the game. So I'm going to have to work this into my load order in such a way that I can test it out and see if this is going to be worth leaving in there or if I'd be better off with my current um, ensemble of tree mods. So my friends, that pretty much covers it for today. I will, I will attempt to get a video such as this done more often so that we can um, go over new mods as they come out in what will turn out to be less than a one hour or 50 minute long video. I remain Kolar the Unkilled, and I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time around.